Hello, this is part one of working on a small robot dog. A quadruped is an extremely capable testing platform for controls and sensing. For example, I could embed a distance center at the front and that would allow me for, to work on obstacle avoidance. External tracking devices such as cameras can be used to allow the robot to navigate buildings and rooms, as well as a GPS would allow the robot to navigate large outdoor areas. Quadrupeds also have the ability to navigate through rough terrain with dynamic stability. So if I have a gyroscope on board, I can tell if a leg has gone too far and is pushing on like a bump, and it can roll that leg back so it can stand on rough terrain, like a car wouldn't be able to do. The first step of designing this dog was settling on a leg design. The leg design is the main interaction with the world, how it interacts with the ground, so it's what I focused on first, and the rest of the robot was built around each leg. There were three main designs I considered based on my research of similar robots online. Number one was a standard leg design with an actuator at the hip and the actuator at the knee. So that would be a standard leg, it looks like a dog's leg, where there's one pivot here and another pivot here and a motor in each. The second design is a similar design to that, except both motors are in the hips and a series of four bar linkages drives the knee joint. And the final design is the one you see here, a five bar linkage. This is the design I ended up settling with. But let's discuss why. One of my main priorities with this robot is that it needs to be lightweight and quick. A design that had the actuator built into the knee adds unnecessary mass into the leg, which makes it harder to move around by the hip joints. This would make it less mobile and add a lot of bulk into the legs that would also reduce the range of motion. That's a bad design and that's why I didn't pick that. The other design of a four bar linkage driving the knee link while the motor was in the hip. I didn't choose as well because it also added a lot of bulk to the leg and a lot of slop because there's so many joints in a four bar linkage. So why did I choose the five bar linkage? This design avoids both the issues. There's no weight in the legs other than just the plastic that's made of that, that they're made of. As well, it includes all the motors in the hip, so there's not much mass in the legs, so they're very quick to move around and they can move around really fast. And it avoids backlash because there's very few joints. There's only these three joints. So there's even less joints than if I was to gonna build the four bar linkage. So it's much sturdier. There's much less backlash. It's much quicker. Overall, it's the best design. So now that we've chosen the five bar linkage very broadly, we need to figure out more specifics. Like what are we gonna do with the length of each leg? What actuators are we gonna use? How, how does the math work out? How do the kinematics work? So the first step of designing this robot mechanism is to be figuring out the forward kinematics of the device. That is, we know what angles the joints are at, the motors are at, how do we find the position of this foot? So this is very trick heavy, so we're gonna to switch to animations for this section. For the forward kinematics, we are trying to find the foot position relative to the origin point in the middle of bar A, the first bar in the five bar linkage. The two actuators are at either end of bar A, and they attach to the next two bars, B1 and B2. The angle between A and B1 is angle alpha, and the angle between A and B2 is angle beta. These are the driven angles by the actuators. Bar B1 and bar B2 are of length B. The ends of bar B1 and bar B2 are easy to find with basic trigonometry. The horizontal component of B1 is B cosine alpha, and the vertical component of B1 is B sine alpha. Similarly, the horizontal component of B2 is B cosine beta, and the vertical component of B2 is B sine beta. We are calling the vertical axis in this case L, for a reason we will see later. L is positive as you go down. From here, we can draw the final two bars of the five bar linkage, C1 and C2, each attached to their respective B bar and connect to the other at the end. Where the two C bars meet will be referred to as point F. Point F stands for foot. Now we can draw a dashed line D between the end of B1 and B2. D has a magnitude found with the Pythagorean theorem. D makes an angle with the horizontal theta. It is easy to see that bars C1, C2, and line D make an isosceles triangle. Because it's an isosceles triangle, a dashed line E can be drawn from point F where the two C linkages meet to the midpoint of line D. This line will be perpendicular to D and its magnitude can also be found using the Pythagorean theorem. Because of high school geometry, lines and angles and stuff, line E 
is the same angle theta apart from the vertical as line D is from the horizontal. Knowing this, it's easy to find the vertical and horizontal components of E. The horizontal component of E is magnitude sine theta, and the vertical component of E is magnitude cosine theta. Because trigonometric equations are really just ratios of triangles, the triangle formed by line D, as well as its vertical and horizontal components, can be used to solve for sine theta and cosine theta. Once we know line E, we know that the position of point F, the foot, is just line E plus the midpoint of line D. The midpoint of line D is just the average of the endpoints of bar B1 and B2. Now looking back at the robot, that math covers two dimensions of the foot movement, the X and the Z. So that can move front and back and up and down, but that doesn't cover how it can move in the Y direction, that's sideways. You'll notice that's driven by this actuator that we haven't talked about yet. So back in animation, line L represents the leg. And the angle gamma represents the angle of this actuator, the hip actuator that I just pointed out. The magnitude of this line L represents the five bar linkage. The y position is given by length of L times cosine gamma, and the z position is given by length L times sine gamma. Using what we found about the five bar linkage, it's easy to substitute the final equation in and solve for the final kinematics. That's good for finding the position of the foot when you know the angles, but what if we need the angles for where we, when we know where we want the foot to go? This is a very common process in robotics and computer graphics called inverse kinematics. There are two forms of inverse kinematics, analytical and numerical. The analytical method uses geometry, much like the forward kinematics we just solved for. Numerical methods use what is called Newton's method to make more and more accurate guesses of the angles each iteration. For this leg, both methods are used for different parts of the leg. The hip joint is solved analytically. Given the desired y and z coordinates of the foot, gamma is easy to solve for using inverse tangent, as well as length l using the Pythagorean theorem. However, solving for angles alpha and beta is a much harder task. The equation for the position of the foot in terms of x and l is too nonlinear to solve for analytically, so a numerical method must be used. Newton's method can be understood easiest if we first look at a two-dimensional example. For example, let's look at the equation f of x equals x squared. In Newton's method, the idea is to start with an initial guess and make a more and more accurate prediction for where the equation is equal to zero with each iteration. Say our first estimate for x0 equals 2. We can draw a tangent line for f of x at x equals x0 equals 2. When this tangent line crosses the x-axis, that will be our next estimate, x1. We draw a new tangent line here and continue the process until we're close enough to zero that we're happy with the result. For other uses, this has to be very precise, but for this, it doesn't really have to be because the servos driving the legs aren't that precise either. If we want to solve for the value of f of x at a place other than 0, then you solve for f of x minus that number, in this case y0. Solving this, we're basically asking, when does x squared equal 1? Then you follow the exact same method as shown in the last example. The slope of this tangent line, which is the derivative of f of x at xn, is equal to rise over run, or f of xn over xn plus xn plus 1. If we solve for this equation for xn plus 1, we see that xn plus 1 equals xn minus fxn over f prime xn. Solving for a position other than 0 works the same way. When we subtract that constant number, it doesn't affect the derivative because the derivative of a constant number is 0. So the new method would look like x of n plus 1 equals xn minus f of x minus y0 divided by f of xn. For equations of higher dimensions, such as a 4D equation, 4D because the two inputs are the two angles, and the two outputs are the x and l position of the leg that governs the foot, 
the same method can be used. x now becomes the vector k, which contains the angle alpha and beta. And instead of using a derivative, we use the Jacobian. A Jacobian is basically a matrix that represents the derivative of a system of equations. The Jacobian, and especially its inverse, is much too complex to solve for by hand. So I use MATLAB's symbolic toolbox to solve for the Jacobian and the inverse as well as simplify it. It results in two massive matrices that we're just going to trust to be correct because I do not want to be checking those by hand. Running a simulation of the leg in MATLAB is now possible. We have the forward and inverse kinematics, so simulating it is very easy. We can set it to move to a certain position, or we could set the angles individually. The two major considerations for the leg design is range of motion, so how much it can move in any direction, and mechanical advantage, or how much force is generated at the foot given the amount of torque by the motors. Range of motion is really easy to analyze. With the MATLAB simulation, we can just loop over all the angles the motors can go to, and that will show the range of motion of the 5-bar linkage. The mechanical advantage calculations are much more interesting. If you recall the Jacobian of the system from earlier, J is the multivariable derivative of the system of equations. The units of the Jacobian are meters per radian, or just meters because radians are dimensionless. If you take the transpose of the Jacobian and perform matrix multiplication of J transpose times the force in newtons, the result is the torque required for the motors to create the force at the feet. With these two methods of analysis, I found that the ideal length for A is 0 0.02 meters or 2 centimeters, the length of B is 4 centimeters, and the length of C is 8 centimeters. The torque calculations showed that an MG90S servo, which is similar to the servo that you get in like an Arduino hobby starter kit, but with metal gears so it's a little more sturdy. And these are fully capable of driving the leg and moving the dog all around. Now that we've chosen and analyzed parameters for the leg, it's time to actually design and build them. I designed the robot in Fusion 360, and the legs are all 3D printed. One part I really like about this design is the 3D printed pins between linkages that were inspired by Lego pins. The pins were designed to snap in and stay with no screws or glue, reducing bulk in the legs and easing construction. The leg design attaches directly to the servos and come back in so the force is directly under the hip pivot. So if you look here, the leg curves, and that's so that this foot is directly under the hip. And that reduces strain on the hip motor, as well as makes it easier to do the math for. Running the inverse kinematic model on the actual robot, we can see the leg moves as expected. The motor movements mesh together to create straight line movement, or we can have the foot move along any path we like. So in this video, we've developed the legs, including the kinematic model, analysis, the physical design, and actually constructing them. In the next video, we'll look at the electronics on board and the kinematics to make the whole robot move. So how to tilt the robot, how to move it side to side, tilt it in this direction, roll it, all without moving the feet. Make sure to subscribe and follow along with the progress of this project as well as all my other projects that I've displayed on this channel. See you in the next part.